Welcome to Ninja Mobile Dart, radiator time. There's the radiator core that's going to be pressed into service. Possibly a little bit large, but as you may be aware, it's got to cool the oil as well as the water. So um, that's what we're going to do. And um, the water comes from the engine there. It'll plug in down there somewhere and then head back up there somewhere. So um, radiator will need some end tanks and it'll need to flow across, down and back out again. So our radiator is coming along there. I've got the core covered in cardboard so I don't damage it while I'm welding and what have you. And um, end tanks are going on. Uh, critical thing you've got to do here is file all this clean. Uh, because it's all covered in the solder from soldering in the tubes and doesn't really weld nicely at all. So that's the right hand tank. Just water goes in and turns around and comes back. The other end, that's the bottom half of the tank with a hole for water to go in. And to stop it going straight through there's a little splitter to cap off that tank before the other tank goes on for the water to come back out again. So there's our finished radiator, which welded up okay. So, water in, goes across, water out. The only little tricky bit there was a little cheat. If you make the top, that little bit of the end cap out of a three mil plate, you can drill and tap it directly to put a bleed screw in, which saves having to weld a boss on there. And that's sitting on the radiator tray, we we'll call that, which is um, all this stuff. Um, slightly ridiculous amount of tube and strength just to hold up a two kilogram radiator, but it has a secondary purpose that if uh, Malcolm ever decides to run into a wall or a tree with the car, it acts as a bit of a deformable crush structure. This bit of 1.2 mil steel lying on top of the radiator is going to hold it down where we're all said and done and um, I'm going to pop some holes in there to make it lighter and look nicer. First thing we need is a 12mm hole and the easiest way to do that is with a step drill or a Christmas tree drill, call it what you like. Four of those now to turn a 12mm hole into a 51mm hole, use this thing, it's called a Q-Max punch. That and a little bit of elbow grease. Just pulls the back of the punch through. One, two, three. Hey presto, 51 mil hole. So now we've made our four holes in our little bit of steel to make it a little bit uh, even better looking and a little bit stiffer. It's a little press tool for putting a little swage in the holes. So that goes in the back, over the front, in the vise, lean on it as hard as you can. And get that little little dimpled effect, which is um, nice and tidy. Just while we're giving away trade secrets, I thought I'd share this one with you. This is the top radiator frame thing which I showed you. And this little bit of jigging is to make it the correct width for the chassis. But having welded it up, 
these two welds in particular make these two tubes bend like that. So now it's a millimetre or so too narrow for the chassis and um, you have to fight to get it on. But we can fix that using a wonderful versatile thing called a uh, oxy torch. Now we don't need to bend anything here. The oxy torch does all the work. Now watch what happens when it cools down. So that's heated up and tried to get bigger but it can't because of the jig. So as it cools down, it just pulls the two legs away. Where it was tight as. Now it's got a one millimeter gap there. Beautiful. Now that we've got our radiator in place and mounted, we need to uh, we have the opportunity to put some get some water there and back again to the engine. And that pipe you can see that's the water inlet pipe. Rather, rather remarkably, runs in a straight line all the way from uh, from the engine to the radiator, just by chance. But the water inlet pipe to the radiator needs to run from there under the steering rack up the side of the chassis and uh, into that hose and it'll have a couple of bends in it so um, there's the bit of pipe and we need to go to our old friend the oxy torch to make it the right shape so here's our piece of tube just got a plug of paper a water paper jammed in one end. That goes in the vise just to hold it up. Funnel in the top and we fill it full of dry sand. Okay, show time with the oxy torch. The uh, thing we need to know is when the aluminium is hot enough to, to be bent. I've got a little wire template bend up here to show me what bend angle I need. The bend wants to be about there. But what you do is blacken the aluminium with, um, with a bit of raw acetylene flame and when it's hot enough to burn off, uh, that's the right temperature. So you just do that, make it black.
a little, there's our little bend. Let it cool down, we'll do another one. And just for completeness, there's our sand bent aluminium water pipe fitted to the car. Looks okay. Water system's nearly finished. One of the final items is a little header tank whose um, job is to hold some air, to let put some spring rate in the system. Uh, water goes in there and fills up via the top water pipe through that hole. Uh, and uh, obviously a radiator cap controls the pressure. And this little thing is an air bleed off the top of the engine so that um, it fills up with water and not a mixture. And just a little, little tweak here, trying to weld that little six millimetre piece of aluminium, or actually five millimetre, um, would be impossible, certainly for me. So two little cheats. It's machined with a, with a weld flange at the bottom, to something you can put some heat into. And to hold it in place while I weld it, little M3 bolt into a tapped hole. And uh, when it's welded on, just run a 3mm drill through to clear the thread away. And no one will ever know.